Good evening, everybody. For the first time, I would like to thank God and the second uh, thanks for giving me opportunity to share my experience uh, because uh, for your information, I had been posted uh, in, in Middle East for almost uh, six years, two and a half years as Consul General in Saudi Arabia, and then three and a half years uh, as uh, ambassador in Qatar. So what I want to share with you based on my personal experience, my interactions with ambassador in the Middle East, uh, also in the world. Yeah. And now we are discussing the topic about the proxy war. All of you maybe uh, understand what is meant by proxy war. Yeah. Yeah, in short, proxy war, actually a war which uh, involve a big powers, foreign factors. So sometimes the war is indirectly yeah, happens, yeah, representing the power behind the conflicting parties. So that's why we are young generations must be able to analyze the phenomenon, why conflicts, war happen in the part of the world. Yeah. And now the character of wars may undergo changes, especially with the advancement of technology. So sometimes become complicated and sophisticated because of technology. Last time we watched at the television that the Aramco, yeah, the oil area in Riyadh is, was attacked by drones. Yeah. Because of technology, yeah, so it can be attacked from a far distance using technology, which is more accurate because the calculation is very sharp. So that's why it is our challenge yeah, today that we are facing what we call uh, disruptive technology, uh, meaning uh, the previous technology become irrelevant because we must renew everything, otherwise we'll be lagged behind. Yeah. So that's why our challenge, do we have ability, capacity to make adapt to adaptation uh, and responsive to the new challenge with the new technology, which is faster and more accurate. Yeah, so that's why we must anticipate what will be in the future, yeah, including the war. Now, especially with, with the uh, discovery of new weapons which are much more massive destructions. If in the past, if we seeing biological, chemical weapons, yeah, 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 or if we use ordinary weapons, maybe the victims, yeah, casualties, not too much. But nowadays, very, very incredible, very, very large and very dangerous for the humanity. So that's why it is our challenge as youth in the future to work together because no single country can solve the problem alone because the heavy problems here. Yeah. So that's why we must promote the culture of dialogue, the culture of peace. Yeah. And of course, it should be in line with our ideology, especially Islam. But Unfortunately, uh, nowadays, Islamic teaching is misunderstood. Yeah. So sometimes it impresses that Islam is very extremist, terrorist, something like that. Killing others in the name of religions. Yeah. So it is the problem of understanding and interpretation of Islamic teachings. Uh, and then it will be translated into practices. So when there is misunderstanding, misinterpretation, it will have far-reaching impact to the implementations. So we are, as young generation, has moral obligation to address these irregularities, this misunderstanding. Yeah. Because the great vision of religion is to bring peace and stability of the humanity. And then Islam is our religion as we conceive that it is not only for the Muslim, not for Arab, no, but the for humanity. 
and for universal. وما أرسلناك إلى رحمة للعالمين. So the great visions of our religion is not only limited only to the Muslim, but also for the humanity. Sometimes it's reduced to limited person, limited community, which is uh, become a radical. Yeah. So now uh, with new era, what we call global. Global means global and local become integrated and interconnected. So something local become global and something global become local. Localizing the global and globalizing the local. So it is now we cannot deny the fact that we should uh, consider all variable, all elements which will influence our existence in the future. Because nowadays, you know, we are characterized by what we call FUCA. FUCA, F U C A. F means uh, volatile. Yeah, it's very easy to change quickly. And then U is full of uncertainty. So sometimes it's very hard to predict, to estimate. So there are a lot of miscalculation in the policy. For example, under when uh, experienced by the superpower, the United States, in the era of Josh Bush. Yeah, when they got advice from Huntington's about the class of civilization, so we have a right to launch a strike, even though there is no proof of guilty of the certain nation. So single attack, yeah, unilateral attack without using United Nations. Yeah. So like what uh, undertaken by United States, it is because of miscalculation policy. So there is a potency for every nation, for every country. If not careful, sometimes we are trapped to the miscalculation policy. So you know, by wrong policy adopted by the United States, you can imagine 5,000 American soldiers were recorded killed in the toppling the president of Saddam Hussein. You can imagine, let alone the civilian, yeah, the soldier themselves, you can imagine in the sight of the American soldiers, 5,000 because of wrong a policy, especially the foreign policy toward Iran. So it is very dangerous for the leaders, especially you are as the, the future leaders must be more careful in uh, making decisions because once you decide a decision, if it is wrong, very dangerous, the impact. So that's why we must consider everything. So you know the decision must consider about maslaha, the impact of the humanity. Yeah. Because we must not be selfish. We, not be, we must not be egoist. Because Islam gives more emphasis to the humanity. We must take care of others people. It is not our ummah if you never take care of the others. So it means that Islam actually uh, must be uh, a solution to the conflict, whether it is local, national, regional, or global. But the challenge is how to make these teachings get across, understood by most of the people, especially the leaders. And you know what happened in Middle East, yeah. because we have not found a good political system. Now we are become a public issue. What kind of public political system should be adopted in every Muslim countries, whether Pancasila it is Islamic or not, like Hilafa. So we are debates. What actually regulated by Islam is the principle, fundamental. The rest is up to all of us. It depends on the uh, regional condition. And this is the problem of ideological, intellectual, and then cultural and structural. So we cannot deny the fact that we are in barrier in many, many aspects, especially in science and technology. So that's why we are encouraged to catch up with the, our technology yeah, at this moment. So, so that's why we must realize this condition. Yeah, because if you want to uh, conquer the world, you must get master science and technology. So sometimes 
Muslim, most of us neglect, neglect this important issue. Yeah, especially uh, in improving our social system, political system, economic system, everything. Yeah. And the consequence now, uh, we are still weak. And in the theory of international relation, weakness invite intervention. So if we are weak, external factors will be easy to come to intervene in our affairs. So that's why the solution is how to uh, strengthen our condition. Yeah, in terms of economics, social, political stability. So that's why if we learn why Americans very powerful and very strong, uh, because they have superiority and supremacy in technology and science. Japan and now Korea. Yeah. So the big questions toward us whether now we are adequately aware about existing condition at this moment. Because sometimes, unconsciously and deliberately, sometimes we do something inefficient and ineffective. Too many times we are wasting because we don't know how to manage our time. Yeah? And also our education system cannot produce a graduate which is a self-reliance, not dependent to others. So if we look at a world-class university, like, for example, MIT, Massachusetts, Oxford, Harvard, they can create ecosystem which enable the graduate. First, they have self-confidence. And the second, self-reliance. And the third, self-resilience. They are very strong in facing many kinds of problems of life. So it is the matter of a culture. And culture cannot be separated with the education, with the example, keteladanan and uswah. So that's why we hope in the future you become the example of the further, the next generations, yeah. especially in the quality. Because if we are not qualified, yeah. so like something useless, there is no meaning, there is no value. If you become meaningless, like buoy, no value, you will disappear. There is no impact in your life. There is no effect in your life. But if you have quality in terms of science and technology, your knowledge, yeah, and give a solution and contribution to the real life, if you have contribution and solution to the human, you will be strong in the world, in, on earth. So that is the Al-Quran said that in order we are strong in our, we must improve our quality. Uh, if quality, then we become strong. If strong, it is very hard for external factors to intervene us. So actually the proxy war is war which happened in one country, but it is controlled by external factors, by the big powers, like what is going on in uh, Syria for almost 10 years. Yeah. yeah, there is division in internally, but when the external factors like the existence of the Russia, and then also China, Iran, and then United States, yeah, and then become more complicated, more difficult to solve the problem. And also ISIS, yeah. Before it is just a resistant group in Iraq. But when they are more powerful, they extend to the other region, to the neighboring countries. So actually ISIS in the beginning just to topple the current government of the Iraq under control of America. But when they have confidence that they can expand with the new ideology, ideology which emphasizes on the extremism yeah. because uh, you know like what happened in Afghanistan yeah like in Lebanon South Lebanon yeah why they are finally successful to expel the foreign powers like Soviet Union like Israel from Lebanon uh, Soviet Union from Afghanistan uh, because they adopt new ideology what is called Hubul Hayat Wal Maut, 
loving life and death. Normally, for the human, we love life, but we scared with the death. Yeah, yeah. Hubat dunia wa karahiyatul maut. But new movement like Taliban is successful to adopt new ideology, which encourage the people and then they topple the foreign troops because they have a very brave and very courageous to expel from the region of the Afghanistan. This is, in other words, yeah, ideology sometimes yeah, uh, influence. Yeah, ideology influence the culture and structural, cultural politics. So that's why yeah, it is very important for all of us, especially you as young generation in the future, to find better understanding on Islamic teachings. Because you know, especially in the universal dimension, because you know that Islam has characteristic of universal. For example, the concept of God in Islam is Rabbul Alamin, not Rabbul Muslimin, not Rabbul Arabiyin, no, not Rabbul Indonesian, no. This is beyond limits. And also a good vision and mission brought by our Prophet Muhammad is not limited for Arab, no. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَىٰ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ كَفَةً لِلنَّاسِ So, by nature, yeah, yeah, the Islamic characteristic is universal, global. So, combination between local and global. So, that's why the Muslim intellectual criticize thesis adopted by uh, Samuel Huntington. So, now they make a correction of their thesis. For the first time, they adopt a clash of Zealand. Then the alliance of civilization. Yeah. After clash, then we must go together. In the beginning is a clash, but now it transformed into the alliance, the unity. So that's why this is in line with the Islamic teaching, the haluf. That we have a concept that human to other human is a kal jasatil wahid. It's like a body. We must strengthen each other. So there is human right. If the part of the body sick, all the rest of the body must feel it. So we cannot be selfish because we are also human, the world citizen. Also Indonesian, national, but we cannot forget that we are also the citizen of the world, global citizen and local citizen. So that is وَأَكِيمُنْ وَزْنَ بِالْقِسْتِ We must uphold the equality, the justice. Because you know, if we neglect the justice and equality, every part of the world, that is the source of the crisis. So what happened in Syria is just a matter of justice and equality. The authoritarians, because there is no justice felt by the community, by the public. So that's why when there is very sensitive and there is an equality in the government, so it is very easy. So that's why Islam give more emphasis to be more careful. But because sometimes it's neglected by the majority of the Muslim. So that's why it is our challenge all of us to adopt. Let's back to our original and agreed vision of Islam. Because now the world undergoing crisis. There is no remedy. There is no solution. Because, you know, for example, the people have confidence to solve the problem of humanity with the technology. In fact, in Japan now, you know, there are a lot of committing suicide. Because the rich stuck, no solution. Because they don't know. What is our ultimate goal in life? They don't know. After that, they kill and shooting himself or shooting others because they're stuck. But in our Islam, we are touched not to live in the world, but hereafter. So there is a balance. We cannot deny the others by giving priority to certain aspects and then neglecting the others. No. Akimur wasn't be kissed. Everything must be balanced. And the problem now, crisis, the world crisis, local, national crisis, 
It is the problem of justice, the problem of inequality. They are too rich, they are too poor, there are a lot of multi gaps. What happened in the world now is the crisis of justice. The authoritarian, for example. So that's why now uh, the solution is how we spread uh, new cultures, new concepts, new vision, new vision to the world. But we must start from ourselves. We cannot control others if we cannot control ourselves. It is touched by our Quran. In Allah, If you want to change the world, start from yourself. So we cannot rely only to, oh, it is just imagine, imagine we can control the world, but we forget ourselves. It must start from the near, from ourselves. And hopefully, when we change ourselves, it extends more to our family, our society, our state, and also our, the human, all the worlds. And hopefully now the conflict, what happening in the world, especially in the Middle East, and especially in the Muslim countries, need our contribution. What we can contribute is we share. We must improve. We introduce new cultures of dialogue, uh, new cultures of peace. Yeah. So actually, the differences is not a threat, but it is a blessing. Because of misinterpretation to certain Islamic teaching become deviative and distortive. And also in our attitude and behavior, in our action, yeah. become exclusive and separated with others because we treat Islam yeah, not as instrument but as a goal. But actually, religion is wasila. The ultimate goal is how we understand God, how we understand ourselves. Ma'rifatillah, haqqa ma'rifati. So, we have a teaching of love. And as attributed in of our God, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, compassionate, merciful to the others. So we are very global, we are very universal, our teaching, but we trap in the reduction of Islamic teaching so that we are very narrow minded and we cannot be free to move freely because of narrow minded. So that is our challenge here yeah. nowadays. So we must give a share with all the people to improve uh, understanding of the Islam. That Islam is not only for the Muslim, not only for the Indonesian, not only for the Arabic, no, for the humanity. So the difference is Rahmah. So that's why we must make deliberation, communication, and collaboration. As stated explicitly by Al-Quran is Ta'aruf. Please cooperate with everything good, but don't cooperate something bad. So it is encouraged, but sometimes Muslims themselves forget about this important teaching. What is stated by Al-Quran is Al-Ghafla. Ghafla is neglected, forgetful. So we must back to our Fafiru ilallah, Fafiru ilal Islam. Because Islam is the best guidance. In al Qur'an, yahdi lillati hiya aqwa. The best. So that's why the problem now in the human crisis is justice, yeah, about the gap, multi gaps. Yeah. And I'm sure if we can uphold justice in Sharia, I'm fully, step by step, we will be improving and become back to normal, hopefully. And from the stability, hopefully, it will far reaching impact to the economic stability. And you cannot imagine now because of war, especially with involving external or foreign uh, factors, you can imagine that refugees, those who fled away from this country to other countries, million and million, let alone the victims who are suffered and also dead, are around thousand, hundred thousand people died with the war in Syria, and they now still going on. So hopefully, what we can do, first of course, we pray to God, because as a Muslim, so besides we have physical weapon, like, yeah, weapon, something like that, but we are metaphysical weapon. Yeah, metaphysical weapon is dua, silahul mu'minin. So we must uh, complement, yeah, complement, that is the, the superiority of the, our teaching. 
uh, we believe not only physical but also metaphysical. Physical dunya, but metaphysical is akhir. So balance. So hopefully by sending dua to all of them, they have new awareness and they change their attitude and behavior. Not to kill others easily, but we begin to love each other. Irhamu manfirat. So we must spread the culture of love to all people in order because the difference is in all is our brothers. In Amal Mu'minuna Ikhwa. Kullu nasa. We must love each other. But now, you know, with the extremist teaching, sometimes we are legalized to kill others in the name of religion, in the name of some. So that's why the Western people very uh, scared with that. Uh, last time I was invited to give a lecture in Australia when I explained to them about the true teaching of Islam which emphasized on the peace and brotherhood, something like that. Oh, they are very amazed. They are waiting for our a quick response, quick example. And hopefully Indonesia become the pioneer to improve, to give example. Because when I was ambassador in Qatar, there is very well known a scholar that is Yusuf Qardawi. When I visited uh, his residence, he told me, Ambassador, I believe that the revival of all Islam will be initiated, will be coming from Indonesia, not from the Middle East. That is the, his saying to me. They are still alive now, living in Qatar, Yusuf Qardawi. So he hoped very much, high expectation that Indonesian Muslim will play more important role in stabilizing the world. Because uh, nowadays, all of us feel the world is in crisis. Yeah. We cannot, we don't know what is our ultimate goal. So there are many parts of the world, like in Japan, there are a lot of modern in the our countries like Japan, Korea, and also in the Western countries. Now, the rate of committing suicide is very high. Yeah, especially in the Korea, artists are yeah, killing himself, herself, because they don't know the meaning of life. But in our religion, give what? A balanced uh, teaching. Yeah. Fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana. So that's our new challenge. Hopefully, you especially, I hope very much from you, yeah, as a young generation in the future, to understand well about the Islam, universal Islam universal dimension of Islam. That Islam is not only for Muslim, it's not only for Arabic, it's not only for Indians, but for all humanity. So if we work hard together and we get across to all humanity, especially in, in the world, hopefully in the future, the world will feel more peace, more stability. And hopefully there is no longer any victim and human suffering in many parts of the world. I think that's maybe my presentation. Thank you very much.